have an announcement to make. Spring Day School is contributing rupees 1 lakh towards Universal Higher Education Trust for educating underprivileged students. I request our correspondent, Mr. Rajendran, to please give away the check to Sri Dr. G. Vishwanathan. Hands together, parents and students. Thank you, sir. We would like to now invite our honorable chief guest, Dr. Jivishwanathan, to address our students and parents group. Well, so Vishwanathji is presenting a memento uh, to the correspondent, Mr. Rajendran, and principal, Mrs. Anindi Rajendran. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Rajendran, the correspondent of the Spring Day School, Mrs. Anandi Rajendran, the principal, vice principal, Mrs. Ramya Shivakumar, other teachers, my dear students, parents, grandparents, very good evening to you. I am not going to take much time now. After witnessing all these and seeing the infrastructure, I wish I am a student of spring days. In a short time, this school has achieved so much. In fact, once upon a time, in Vellore, there used to be no good schools. And they will have to go to Chennai, Madras, to join good schools. That was the case about 50, 60 years ago. And also these districts, the northern districts of Tamil Nadu, were so backward in education, mostly North Arkad, South Arkad, Dharmapuri, etc. And uh, that's why we were lagging behind economically also. I congratulate Mr. Rajendran for taking the initiative and now he can be called the leader of the school education in this part of the country. He has done so much for the upliftment of school education. See, this is the foundation for higher education. Ultimately, as he spoke about the education and the economy, related to economy, the economy of a society, a family, society, and the country depends on the educational status of people. As a nation, we are lagging behind in higher education because only 27% of the eligible people are going to higher education in this country. It's what we call GER, Gross Enrollment Ratio is 27% in India, and it varies from 60% to 100% in the developed countries, advanced countries. Of course, within the country, there is so much variation between the states because of the various circumstances. Tamil Nadu is number one with 50% GER, and Bihar is the lowest with 15%. And it reflects in poverty as well as in the economy. I am telling you this as an example. As a country, we were together with China in 1960s. And uh, South Korea and Japan were just ahead of us. In 1978, economic reform was introduced in China. And we introduced economic reforms in 91, when Narasimha Rao was the Prime Minister and Manmohan Singh was the Finance Minister. In a short time, 30, 35 years, an agrarian economy, China has become the center for manufacturing everything in the world, manufacturing center of the world. 
at the time our per capita income and china's per capita income are almost similar you know how to measure a country means only per by per capita income and gdp is the total per capita income is the individual our per capita income was 224 dollars it was 244 dollars in china 20 dollars difference now after 30 35 years or 40 years our per capita income is 2500 they have crossed 12500 because they concentrated on education that's what we are trying to impress upon the governments in india both the union government as well as the state governments that they should spend more money on education education and health any welfare state should take care of education and health no doubt we are spending but much lower than what is expected for long years more than 50 years our demand has been that 6% of the gdp the total income of the country should be spent on education we have not crossed 3% or 3 and 1/2% that is why parents are, requ are required to spend more there are number of governments where government spends more and parents will be spending less for example japan south korea finland etc the, the opposite is happening in our country and uh, as uh, sir rajendran pointed out if all of us get good education this society will go up the family will go up and uh, in fact people talk about unemployment it is only for those who are not qualified to be the fitting candidate take for example vit last year this year it's going on now placement last year we had 970 companies both national and international and came for selection and almost all the students were placed in fact i am so happy that a boy or a girl gets three or four companies instead of company choosing the student the student chooses the companies he whatever he wants he wants to join that is the opportunity available at present our old students are there serving in the 84 countries i am so happy that they are all doing well in those countries and that is possible once you concentrate on your studies that's what i would like to emphasize upon the students who have got the ranking today 10th and 12th i congratulate all of them and all the prize winners i congratulate because it's not only education but the other co curricular and extra curricular activities are also very very important i congratulate all of them in fact at this time i would like to make an announcement because i am coming for the first time to the school from next year onwards the best outgoing student in 10th standard and the best outgoing student in 12th standard will get a gold medal on behalf of vit every year i will make arrangements we want to encourage students i saw many of them have got a good ranking in the vit entrance exam and some of them have got in neat also this year we have received 2 lakh and 24000 applications now the entrance examination is going on as i told you we have enough opportunity for our boys and girls who are in india because a number of countries the population is declining they don't get children in fact many of them don't get married no most of them are advanced countries their population is going down and where will they go for labor they will have to come to either india or china because these are the two countries where we have enough youngsters and uh, compared to china we have an advantage of language english language so we have an advantage to go all over the world and sir of course throughout the country also we can go and uh, multinational corporations are coming to india nowadays so i want you to get qualified for the job wherever you are 
you are going to be engineer, doctor, whatever it is. In fact, uh, our principal was mentioning that uh, wherever you go, you should sign. Whatever subject you choose, it doesn't matter whether it's art, science, engineering, medicine, whatever, social sciences, etc. Whatever you choose, you do well and you are bound to get a good job, good placement. In fact, we have an opportunity to go for manufacturing. Instead of becoming an employee, you can become an employer after completing your studies or getting some training because we are very much lagging behind in manufacturing. We contribute only 3% of the world enough manufacturing, the total, whereas China is contributing 30%. We have to compete with them. The in population, that's the only country comparable to us. They are only 2-3 crores above us, and in one or two years we will overtake them. We will become world's number one in population, but it is not enough. We will have to give them enough opportunity to study and to have skill development, skill uh, training, because there also we are lagging behind. That's why the unemployment problem arises. These are the things. I, I saw the wonderful infrastructure in this school. Mr. Raj, I congratulate Rajendran and his family, because I have studied in government schools and panchayat union schools. I, I didn't see any infrastructure in those days. Compared to those, is far, far better. And probably in those days, we used to go to Madras. Now, people from Chennai have to come and study in Velo. They should come to Spring Days. That's the kind of infrastructure they have created. And I would like to congratulate all the teachers for preparing the students, whether it is VIT entrance exam, NEET exam, etc. I hope one day we also become normal in medical education. This is an abnormal situation in this country as far as medicine is concerned. About 16, 17 lakh students want to be doctors. They want to study medicine. They write the NEET exam, out of which about 8 lakh students clear the exam. But what is the number of seats available? Central, state, private, all put together, it is around 90,000, less than 90,000. And there is so much problem. In fact, last year, because of legal problem, state government, central government, national medical council, high court, supreme court, all are involved in this. Out of 60,000 seats in India, in the postgraduate MDMS, 3,700 seats were not filled because of the confusion created by all these people. And about 200 seats were vacant in MBBS. We have 8 lakh of them cleared the need. Seats are available in less number. We have 17 lakhs engineering seats in this country, but only 80 to 90,000 medical seats. That has to change. We have an artificial famine in this country in medical education. I hope the state and central governments understand this. Create more colleges, more seats. If you construct a college, you are permitted only 100 or 150 seats. Maximum is only 250. It is 400 in UK, in London, in um, England. They allow 400 intake in every college. And in China, they allow 600. Why can't we follow that? Immediately, three times the number of seats may go up. Only thing is, you require more infrastructure and more professors. It is possible. See, our students are going all over the world to study medicine. But for Ukraine war, we would not know that 18,000 Indian students are studying medicine in Ukraine. Because there was a war, people have to be evacuated, and they could not be accommodated here. Every year, about 20 to 25,000 students are going out of the country to study medicine to China, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Philippines. Except Pakistan, our students are there everywhere in the developing countries. This is the situation. It's a shame on our country that we must be able to do this. We have so much infrastructure, so much development also taking place. I think it is time now that we concentrate on this and allow people to study because we require doctors. There is a shortage of seven lakhs of doctors in our own country. In fact, there are states, the, according to World Health Organization, WHO norms, there should be one doctor for 1,000 population. 
There are only six states where we have this uh, 1,000, less than 1,000. Like Tamil Nadu stands first. But there are states in India where you have one doctor for 7,000 to 8,000 people, like Jharkhand, etc. I think uh, it's a shame on us that we are still in the ancient uh, world and we should change. We should have enough opportunity for our students to study. And uh, there are good schools which prepare, like Spring Days, which prepares everything, everybody, for whether it's medicine, engineering, whatever it is. I congratulate them and the management, um, the principal and the correspondent and all the teachers who are doing wonderful work in this uh, school. I, this is going to be a model school for the entire country in the future. I, I, am, I wish that um, Rajendran goes even out of the state to show how we can build very good schools so that the students can come up in the future. Our future lies in education. Once you get good education, the family will come up, the society will come up, and the country will become an advanced country. With this, I conclude. I thank Mr. Rajendran and uh, Anand Rajendran for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.